look at you. What are you so happy about? Go visit your son in the hospital, damn it. Hunter x Hunter episode 140, join Battle X and X open battle. Oh yeah, how's Gon doing? It'd be so crazy and sad if Gon's first interaction with Jing is while he's unconscious. He's just emanating darkness. Just the healer that we sent for? Sorry. <laughs> Thought I could help, but... Uh, it actually is what's happening. I love that they stayed so tight in after the ant thing. It's good that Bisky cares. Wing. A lot of people. Is this the same kind of Nen that Hisoka was looking for, for Okoro? This definitely seems like one of those what is the value of a human soul type situations. What is the equivalent exchange for a person's whole life and all of their potential? Full Metal Alchemist's answer is a whole lot. There will be sacrifice. Also, I think you could make the case, and I've seen people make the case, that Gon and Miriam are on similar paths but in opposite directions. This is wild speculation and I don't know how it's going to turn out, but you might be able to make the case, or I'm guessing it might go this way, that actually it turns out they're on the same path just at different points. Like, Miriam experienced a death and rebirth, so can Gon. No gamble here at all. You know, just risking my life, your life, everyone you know's life, everyone you love. I see no risk. This is not the most inspiring thing to say after the whole there is no gamble. Oh, it's you. How is he monitoring this from the family compound? Okay. Let's just old tricks again. He could be a little bit more direct with his love. Level 4. Wouldn't it have been more palatable to just let the mother die? What has she done for us lately? It's shocking how badly they treat Kalua, given that there's no precedent for mistreatment. Okay, I thought it was a hit. The fact that they have pre-arranged levels for children, children escaping. Well, if you follow this logically, there's some level where it's killing, right? It's death. I mean, that's that doesn't need to be family policy. That's just smart. Don't tell anyone about anything. Sure. Damn, even Subone is involved? That's how you know you messed up. Also, Kalu doesn't need to bargain with anyone. He has a Luka. Come on now. I don't know what Boniko can do, but it's not a Luka level. I mean, honestly, couldn't you just repeat the, the kiss gambit forever? Well, I guess you do that enough times and they just get fed up and kill you. No, you listen. Whatever you said your name was. I will Luka gambit you. Oh wow, she instilled fear in this kid early. <laughs> okay. I don't know who she is, but wow, even Goro. Give me your liver. <laughs> give me your brain and spine. Give me all of your body parts. Kalua has a gambit, I think. He's got a gambit. He knew this already. Oh no, not the job. Yeah, here we go. Better do it, do what she says. She'll just rip it off though. What does she care? Yeah, this girl is just carrying an atomic bomb in your pocket. I mean, given the options, you can have it. They must really care about this job. I'd be in the back. Oh, 
おねだりすることはできなくなりました。So、that does work. もちろんお二人のおそばからは離れませんことよ。まだあったのに。We know you do. We know you have more requests, that's why. お兄ちゃん、怒ってる I don't understand the psyche of Aluka. It's like something is occupying part of her brain. How is it that she was just like isolated in a vault for all this time and didn't bat an eyelash? Is it because of the torture? It's because of the torture, isn't it? She's used to this. She thought it was a training game. Lua's talking about saving her, but like, save her from what? <laughs> she seems perfectly happy just to be in a room alone. So, if you want to say that, you can say that you can say that you can say that you can say that. Was it moral? You don't hang up on moral. <gasps> He's alive! Yeah! There you go, finally! <laughs> right, remember that time when Lyra was part of the show? <laughs> Lyra is me, for real. Melody's ears is getting ripped off right now. Melody getting the vague sense that Lyria was angry. He's risking a lot of people's lives. He's also risking Lyria's life. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't talk to Lyria that way. ごとうの言う通りにしてくれ。インクルウィトラスト。コットグリ。えっと、モラウさんだっけ俺が俺の携帯で。No, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, Moral already has this gambit figured out from the beginning. Moral already has the phone in his hand, where life is Nen becomes directly life is Nen. What is this riddle? I'm not moral smart. That is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Moral can make it possible, though. Nero fell for another one. This support of Kalua and his plan. It was a half lie. <laughs> I love this with more confidence stuff. It's so heartwarming. And that's what Lyra realized. Any friend of Kalua is a friend of mine. Isn't that super frustrating for Lyra too? Like, for all his focus on medicine and stuff? Probably one of the reasons why he's so riled up. He's got this whole history of not being able to help people. Lyra probably just massively frustrated he can't do anything. That was ominous. Are we ever going to see Korpika again? I think he's just fully off into his mafia life. Well, there he is. He's just Don now. Ah, uh, yes. Give me the politics. Look at this guy, how could he be evil? He's so handsome. You can't be handsome and evil. <laughs> the suspicion. <laughs> I love how he just throws everyone under the bus. It's like a weird funhouse mirror version of My Hero Academia. I'm gonna ruin your career with a smile on my face. Thank you, Netero. And Rotten Hell. Why does he have a throne? <laughs> and everyone said he's already the leader. You know he picked a seating arrangement for this, too. 
Oh, we have it coming now. <laughs> this is triggering both my excitement and my social anxiety. Ask him. It needs to be asked. We've been waiting for this. Aren't you his father? And many other questions that I would love to know the answer to, like why, where, <laughs> what? What is your relationship with Gon? Yeah, he's very good at politics himself. I have this feeling that I can't verify that people make a mistake when they address controversy. It makes so much sense. The natural instinct is to panic when you get thrown into the spotlight for something negative and you just want to kill it because you're feeling the, the unseen pressure of everyone hating you and judging you and talking about you. You just can't bear that feeling. So you want to strike out against it, spin a positive campaign for yourself. And maybe that is the best course of action. I think it is the best course of action if genuinely people care about the issue and there are things you could say that will clear your name because those people are actually interested in the truth. But that is often not the case especially on the internet, and it misses what people's motivations actually are, which is taking you down a peg. I think genuinely we love to see success from people we deem worthy of success. There's another element of us that also really enjoys watching people fall because it reaffirms or gives some confirmation, some comfort to ourselves for the idea that, oh, actually, I don't really need to aspire to great things or difficult things or high rank because those people only got there because they're terrible, because they cheated their way there, because there was some other dark quality that I didn't know about that was already there. There is this inherent potential in admiration for envy. And in that envy, there's sort of a psychological bloodlust. So it's really thrilling to see people who have enjoyed fame and fortune and accolades fall to the bottom. And people who really don't see any way for themselves to become great or to get what they want, deviate to a tactic of trying to raise their own position relatively by bringing other people beneath them. So it's nothing constructive for themselves, it's deconstructive for others. So in a scandal or accusation, let's say, for argument's sake, isolating and ignoring the actual merit to the accusation, engaging with people whose mission is to take you down a peg, validates them, gives them more to engage with from the safety of wherever they are with no skin in the game, no stakes, only upside, no downside, to mock your attempts, to belittle your efforts, to take things out of context, to to try to score wins. On the other hand, I think if you eat the pain for a little bit, not acknowledging it at all, just continuing to do what you're doing unfazed doesn't guarantee you'll escape unscathed, but it does seem to be to increase your chances. And I'm thinking of a few relevant examples that I've seen online. I mean, it's a couple things. One, it's a psychological power move to have a lot of people clamoring and you just continue doing what you're doing. It reaffirms the position that you actually are someone of rank and that the critics are nobodies. It also means people get bored of it very quickly because there's no new material, there's no new content, there's nothing else to dig into. It creates a temporary commotion that just is gone as soon as the next thing emerges. I think in this case, Jing actually resolutely has a just a different perspective that he feels confident in, so it's genuine. But like, since this is a political arc, I think that actually is very tactically intelligent. <laughs> He was about to get himself removed. Yes, I, it's even worse than you thought. I planned this somehow. Uh, well, he's unconscious, but I, I mean, I, I actually, I kind of do see Jing's point. I also don't want that to be their first meeting. I don't know. Whoa, he's open combat in the men's court. That table got it worse than Debbie's cabinet. What is this? Is this the first eclipse in Lyra's men? At a time like this, he's got portal fists. That time, Lyra punched Jing in the face. <laughs> this is the best courtroom meeting ever. That's going viral. Wow, Jing got knocked out. I'm attending the next meeting for sure. Yeah, Lyra just saved this election. <laughs> I can't get over this. This riff in the episodes. Wow, that was the fist of... <laughs> All of Gon's friend and every viewer that hit him. What the hell, man? All right, Gon's a pretty messed up kid. We know this now. Maybe we've always known. There were a lot of early signs, you know, like him not caring about dying at any point, despite being on the verge of death many times, deliberately. But there's something beautiful about Gon. There's something beautiful about his spirit and what he wants and how it just means so much for him to have certain victories. And I don't think he would want it this way. It's more than just his father at this point. It's his quest. I mean, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it because he needs help, clearly. He needs a father figure, for God's sake. 
takes, but it also would be really cool if he finds Jing on his own terms. Random thought that emerges. I wonder if the Rats game is winning even. It probably is, but it's also possible because it's Hunter x Hunter. The winning of the election is masking some other bigger goal. I'm also not really sure what Jing's role in this here is. I mean, he's saying it's for fun, I and mean, that's very free freaks-ish, but uh, I don't know. For the man who doesn't show up to stuff, seems unlikely that would be his sole mission.